Well, another person that is clearly showing or flexing their muscles, Amber Rose. Now, she shared a message on Twitter or Instagram or somewhere on social media about this tweet that resurfaced. Now, people have dug up a tweet. Now, y'all already know I've been a victim of digging up old tweets. Kevin Hart's been a victim of digging up old tweets. I think there needs to be a moratorium on anybody who has a problem with anybody who's used Twitter before 2019, maybe 2020, because everybody did crazy tweets. Well, Amber did one in 2015 that has been resurfaced and has gone viral, and she called out the Kardashians and Kanye West. And she tweeted this back in the day. Kanye West, I'll leave that up to the Kardashians to humiliate you when they're done with you, end quote. So Amber and Ye went back and forth on Twitter. You remember it was really nasty. This is when he had went on The Breakfast Club. And in the interview, he said, it's very hard for a woman to be with someone that's with Amber Rose. I had to take 30 showers before I got with Kim. That just had Twitter going crazy. We all know out of that relationship, Amber started the walk to really end shaming for women. And then Ye has gone on to become a part of the whole Kardashian world. Well, Amber went on social media once this went viral again, and this is what she posted. She said, man, f that old ass tweet. I never got an apology for his 30 showers comment, but f it. I started my walk and helped millions of women around the world stand up for themselves against shaming. So something amazing came out of it. Kim nor her sisters deserve that tweet, and y'all shouldn't co-sign that either. F was old and immature as f of me to involve the Kardashians in the mess he made. Moving forward, learn from my mistakes. We all have kids and families. Life is hard enough right now for a lot of people. I just want to spread love and positivity. Mother. Mother. I love it. Think? I love it. I feel like in the in the moment, I'm sure she was mad at everybody, including the Kardashians, because as you can see, Kanye went on from messing with Amber to moving on to the Kardashians or whatever. And honestly, I don't know if Kim had anything to do with that. I don't know the behind the scenes. Actually, I've heard some things. But anyway, I think it shows growth in Amber. I think at that time, she probably was mad at Kanye and everybody in the world. But, you know, as this tweet comes up, people are trying to bring up old tweets and hold people to them. I'm sure Amber doesn't feel like that now. She's a mother. Kim's a mother. Kanye's a father. It's a lot of stuff going on. And it's no point of dwelling on the past. You know what I love about this tweet is that Amber is exhibiting something that some of her biggest critics don't have, and that's emotional intelligence. Because if you really look at the statement she said, there are a million reasons why she could have circumvented taking accountability for her actions because she knows that the community doesn't, doesn't like the, the Kardashians. She knows that Ye sometimes is in and out of public favor. She could have hid behind a million reasons why it was everybody else's fault. Instead, she took it on the chin and said, regardless of what was going on, I take responsibility for my actions because I've grown. So she is actually incredibly emotionally intelligent. And I want people to recognize that she just showed what a real apology looks like because she took accountability without making excuses. Even when she could. Let me say this. We have to stop digging up old tweets. Now, we're not going to stop promoting them when they go viral because we're the post of pop culture. <laughs> if pop culture is making it go viral, we have to post it. But at some point, folks, you have to remember, when we had AOL dial up and we were on the party lines, do you want to bring up old recordings and when we were trying to hook up? Or do we enjoy the advancement of technology and love that we can now swipe right in our own privacy? Like we was all on the party line, playing around, changing our voices, going into private rooms. At least I know I was. I, I was. But I was I just, on the party I line. Just feel like, I just feel like with the, the evolution of social media, it's just made it too easy to cancel people. Now, I personally think that like my own experience with dragging Kevin Hart for his own tweets and then getting drugged for mine, Let's just agree that everybody before 2017 or 18 were just stupid on social media. And if you weren't, it was because you were scared to be stupid and you were just stupid in private. Yeah. I don't think it's cool. And then also, at what point does Amber Rose move on? At what point does Ye apologize for the 30 showers comment? At what point is there closure? And what does closure look like for that couple who's no longer a couple, like you guys are no longer connected to each other. Move on. Well, closure by definition means clarity. And I think Amber's clear. I think she's very clear by where she stands. All right. So let me ask you guys, and I'll share before you tell me, if there's ever been a moment in any relationship you've ever had where you're still caught up in that relationship because you have not had closure. And I'll tell you, for me, I think the relationship I wrote about in my book, God Must Have Forgot About Me, was when I, uh, chapter five, toxic ass 
when I was with this guy who lied to me, cheated on me, and stole from me within the first week or month or, I don't know, first quarter of us being together. And I ended up staying with him for three years after that. But one thing I, I will say is it made me cheat. It made me, I didn't lie about it, but it just made me a real toxic person in that relationship. And then what I think it did was it really, it really ultimately set the bar for me in terms of what an all-time low is. Like I'm no longer going to be with somebody that doesn't respect me, that doesn't value me, that doesn't protect me, that doesn't treat me with the respect that I deserve. If there's no transactional value in our love and our love sharing. And so I learned a lot about myself and I learned a lot about self-love and why it was important to love myself. Now, I haven't seen him since I dropped him off at the bus stop because I didn't even get him a plane ticket. I put Damn. him on a bus for the dog and his clothes, all his clothes, and sent him on his merry way. And I have not seen him since. And so part of me wonders, like, do I want to see him again <laughs> to, you know, have closure? Or do I want to see him again to go, look at me now? You know, I don't know. I don't know. You don't know? Like, you, you, you might go back? Like, don't know? You might even thinking about it? Uh, Oh, no, I oh. don't. I will never go back. I'm saying I don't know if I want to see him again to have closure. You know, we never really had a conversation about the ending of it all. I just kind of ended it and was like, peace. Uh, Jason, I don't think you want closure. I think you might want revenge. Because um, again, <laughs> and this is something that I, and not to put my teacher hat on, a lot of times when you say you want closure, you just want the last word. You don't actually want closure. Closure means that you are clear about why you didn't work. And there's no ambiguity about why you're incompatible. So if you're really clear about why you didn't work, that's not closure. That's revenge. You just want to, to see how big you are and be like, na na na, poo poo in his face. But like, that's not. Well, I mean, I'm sure he's. I'm sure he's seen me somewhere, right? But I just of think that there needs to be some apology. Like I feel like in many ways I'm owed an apology for how things ended and how things were. I think a lot of people get into these toxic situations and then leave and then continue to just breed to uh, toxicity among every relationship they come in contact with. You know, I thankfully was able to learn from mine, but no, I think I'm owed an apology. Yeah. You know, I haven't heard him. He hasn't popped up on social media trying to get clout to any of our business, which I guess I can appreciate, but I still feel like out of all the relationships I've ever had, this is one that did not give me the full closure that one needs to move the on. The acknowledgement. But, I mean, yeah. You probably wanted to be acknowledged too, right? Because when someone apologizes, they have to acknowledge how they were ungrateful in the moment. And so a lot of times we want an apology. We just want you to acknowledge that I was good to you and you were to me. Can you just acknowledge that so that I know that I didn't make that up? You know what I mean? So I think a lot of times a simple apology isn't just about getting your ego stroked. It's saying you can't repeat a mistake. I mean, sorry, you can't fix a mistake that you haven't admitted that you, de you did in the first place. So once somebody apologizes, then they can say, I can do better. But if you don't apologize, you're probably going to repeat your mistakes over and over and over again. And let's be real, those closure conversations either end in an argument or a very unnecessary fling that might pop off because, you know, everybody's acting like they're their best selves at the moment. And sometimes apologies do come and you might slide back into a situation you need to slide your ass out of. So those closure, those closure conversations scare me sometimes because it's like, I'm not trying to get in this argument with you because I might not agree with what you're trying to say is closure. Or I might agree with you and now we're off on this fling that we shouldn't be in because we are still the same people. You still the piece of you used to be. And that's what it is. So sometimes I've had closure conversations and you start talking to the person again. And it's like, I don't know why I'm doing this because the same outcome comes. So damage that means you yeah. don't trust you don't trust yourself. I, I, I don't, I don't know what outcome is coming in your life, but I am not sliding in anything. Yeah. I, have, I am over it. I am over it. But I do think that, you know, the, there's a, I'm the type of person in any relationship that I just really need to talk it out one good time and then close the door. Like if, if, if I talk it out with the door kind of open, it's just kind of like, damn, what was that? Right. Mm -hmm. Now have either one of you had a situation, a relationship where you feel like you haven't received closure and you actually could benefit from it? I, oh yeah, I have. <laughs> All right. You know what? It's, it's a good day. It's a new year. I'm safe. Um, yeah, I do have a closure situation where I wasn't dating someone, but we were really close for about two years. And then one day out of nowhere, he confessed to me on um, G chat that he was in love with me, but I was in the bathroom and like got caught up and didn't come back for an hour. And in that hour, he like lost his mind and was like, well, never mind. I don't love you anyways. I didn't meet like freaked out on me. And so I like set up a time for us to have a conversation and like work through it. He imploded so bad. He did not talk to me for two years. 
He said, mm-hmm. I love you. And then wouldn't talk to me for two years. And this was one of my best friends. So it wasn't like it was a, like a, like a simple relationship. Several years later, he comes back and is like, you know, I, I was really, really immature and loving you scared me. And so I had to make you the bad guy and pretend I was mad at you because I was better than me feeling rejected. And then he tried to, the damages point, tried to re- yeah. kindle the flame but here's the difference though <laughs> i trusted myself so when somebody tries to rekindle the flame they can only trick you if you don't trust yourself so i understood in that moment i was like no you've already shown me that you have no ability to deal with conflict in a healthy way so even though i loved you five years ago i don't trust you anymore so thank you for the apology but no so you can circumvent the attempt well he sounds like the lead actor in the show you um somebody joe <laughs> Yeah, he sounds like Joe. He sounds Joe-ish. I mean, like, yeah. after five years, you came back and talked about a G-chat? Hey. He conf- he conf- Jason, if you said I love you to somebody and they didn't respond for an hour, you might feel like you got rejected. Yeah. I just have to be. No, because people are working. People are busy. People might be taking a sh- Maybe their balance shifted the wrong direction. Yeah. Right. But, you know, but I mean, I think the fact that he overreacted after not being responded to for an hour. Exactly. Made him a little Joe-ish for me. But anyway, God bless him wherever he is. What about you, Damage? He's rich, uh, man. No, and I, and I don't trust myself because accountability sounds good when you're having those, like, closure conversations. Oh, man, you can say all the right stuff. And I'm going to believe it sometimes. So, no. Is there a situation that needs closure? There was one. And it ended up into a fling. And this is why I am done with closure conversations. If it's over, it's over. If we don't know why it ended, then we just don't know why anymore. I'm not going back to have these conversations. It it ended up in a fling. What does that mean? Oh, yeah, because it's like, oh, man, why did we break up? And it's like, oh, no, like, what really happened? Was it really us? And then it's like we kind of convinced ourselves that it wasn't a problem. And as soon as we start talking again, it's like, no, there was a problem. This is the problem. Because sometimes you can break up with somebody and for me, I don't know if I block it out. You sometimes forget the ultimate reason on why you broke up if it wasn't so toxic. So, Because every mm-hmm. breakup doesn't have to be a super nasty, toxic situation. So you can forget, like, mm-hmm. what was it? And then you, as you start talking for a few days, like, oh, I remember you are stalking me. You're always on my social media. You're always checking my comments. And I'm just making things up. So that's what happened with me. You know, it sounded good during the closure conversation. Once we started talking for a few days, a few weeks, I was like, oh, no, now I remember. Damage just proved my point. Remember why I said if you don't acknowledge something, you're going to repeat it? When somebody is stalking you and doesn't say, hey, I'm sorry for stalking you. I'm acknowledging it happened. Because you didn't make them acknowledge it, now you're going to forget and they get to do it all over again. This is why I don't care what you've done to me, how small it is. If you don't acknowledge it, I will never trust you because you're going to repeat it. You just proved my point. Because you well, forgot. Let me be very clear. If you do too much in a relationship with me, my closure is going to be real like, hey, this ain't worked out. Go, Jason. Nah, because see, some of y'all need all that extra meat and potato breakup. Like, nah, let's just slice this steak up, digest it slowly, then get the hell out. Because I mean, what do you sit and talk about? Like, you could only go so much into why it didn't work out. Closure for me is not like a three-hour conversation. It's just there needs to be one thing, one moment that brings it all together, puts a button on it or a bow, and then puts it in a box. That's, Jason, that's it. Jason, is I, there- I think for, most, for in every other relationship, I've had a successful uh, closure to, you know? So, yeah. I have, Jason, just a quick question. Is there a, a small thing, like a thoughtful thing that someone can do that will feel make you feel endeared to them again? Like, is there something that someone could do that could make you be like, oh, you know what? This is a rare thing that I want back in my life. Because I've had a situation like that recently. I, and absolutely. I'm curious. Absolutely. Don't call me again. Give me back. <laughs> Wait, so the point well, that's the thing. <laughs> when you, when you, that's what you can give me. Don't call me. Like, once you know th- that it's not cool like that, and we, but we have our closure, though, just don't call me. You gave me back what I lost. Peace. I'm good. You know, my other exes, we're good. We can hang out. We go drink. We party, whatever. They come to the house. Me and one of my exes, we even rent the strippers and have them come over and have a good time. Oh. But I have closure when I close that door. He goes home to his husband. By the way, my New York apartment, I'm not, a, I don't live in New York anymore. So I'm just out of New York City and back here in LA full time. So no more stripper late nights. 